I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and sex shop owner. And I'm April, VP of an international high-end pleasure products company and boss queen sex toy mogul. We're best friends who make our own rules about who we are as sexual beings. With everything from how to be a badass in the bedroom to top tips for bringing your relationship to the next level, we have something just for you. So sit back, relax, and and enjoy enjoy the show. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast. We have raspy voices a little I bit. I especially have a raspy voice because yeah. of the Sex Expo. Yeah. Brooklyn Sex Expo. Mm-hmm. So successful. You were emceeing the event. was emceeing the event. There was loud music. You had to kind of scream and yell most of the time. And well, I, even if I, I had a microphone, obviously, most of the time. However, you just have to pump the audience. It was super fun. Yeah, it was really fun. I really had the best time. It was even better than last year. And we have our guest here, Lola Dirty Lola. Dirty Hello. Hello, Dirty Lola Dirty is here with Lola. us. We're actually Hi. here with you in your, <laughs> in your place. In your house, yeah. And Lola was at the trade show as well, day one. That, yes. Yeah, that was... Bananas. Uh, bananas. Oh. Everyone. You can barely you, move through the you, through the aisles. Yeah. yeah. There's so many people and just and so much talking. Yes. So Ooh. much talking. Yeah. I and I was impressed. We were right by the cam girls, the Chatterbait Cam girls. And I was impressed that they didn't take any breaks. It started at eleven AM, right? And yeah. they went till six PM and they were in front of those cameras doing their cam girl work the whole time someone was asking me how much do you think they make i'm like honestly i'm pretty sure they make i don't know every minute minute? they make yeah you you get paid by the minute because there's probably multiple people too yeah you have multiple cam i was like thousands of dollars an hour i don't know i was just so into how focused they were like they weren't even looking up or distracted by what was happening they're like i'm gonna eat this pizza right into the camera (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean you're taking my lunch break (laughs) on the camera i'm gonna make money while i eat my pizza (laughs) i have respect for that work i really do i'm like go get it you're your own you're making your own money from wherever you are mm-hmm. yeah and you can it's consensual there's no touching right mm-hmm. except yeah. they touched each other a bunch yeah. i was like go get it i yeah. like their little sets yes. oh yeah they like each had a little different one had like an office yeah, yeah. <laughs> the other one had a couch i guess last and then some people had beds last yeah. year they had a kitchen oh really yeah. it was like a kitchen and it had like a little fridge and a little it had like a little stove and they were cooking something they were like making eggs wait it was a real stove they, like yeah a it was, oh, like, it was a, a, real like a stove top like one of those like a camping like, stove yeah like and they the were making one eggs I, yeah and <laughs> in she laundry was wearing, like a little yeah. like an apron and a bikini top oh and she's like, making eggs at the camera and i'm like it's a whole kitchen this is <laughs> that's awesome incredible. well i mean that to the, these days working remotely from home or, where, or wherever you travel to you can yeah. do that in a hotel room right your your career is there with you so yeah hats off to them and for i literally just not take any breaks i mean we couldn't take any breaks on saturday either i was about to uh go breathe into a paper bag for <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh, okay, so we're going to dive on into the podcast. This episode is uh, about all about sex after a big life shift, which Lola has some very specific, uh, important, actually, and personal experiences with here, too. Yeah. But you are also uh, a sex educator, or I like how you would say that. And we'll read your bio in a little bit, but an, an ed, eduta- edutainer? Am I saying that edutainer. right? Edutainer. Yeah. Love it. Speaker, et cetera. So we will dive into that. Um, and before we read some testimonials, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Nicola Amadora, who was on episode 101 of our podcast, which is how to have a deep connection uh, and juicy sex, uh, who in Nicola is also my therapist. Uh, and in, she's also very, a very um, connected spiritual being. Uh, a lot of people really like the episode. We got a lot of really good feedback and she's doing a retreat in Santa Cruz, October 19th and 20th. Uh, of 2019 to learn more go to nicolaamadora.com or go listen to episode number 101 uh, she has a lot of really wonderful shifts to gifts to share <laughs> uh, and she's changed my life in terms of my growth uh, so testimonials here's here's a very positive one from someone um, anonymous listener you two ladies have changed my life 
I'm 48 and I've slept with two men and the second one, the love of my life, whom I married, was awesome, accommodating, and incredibly patient. So patient, in fact, that when you two came along 17 years into my marriage, he carefully and cleverly introduced me to you. As a former prude, you ladies are the most wonderful and fabulous people alive. I love what you have done to the... to the women like me who have hidden behind former shameful beliefs about what we should or could do and be without shame. On September 30th, 2019, we will be celebrating our 19th wedding anniversary and it will be done with fa- uh, with fabulous and a- will be done fabulously and with a plethora of other goodies. There was something about vibrators. I think I maybe deleted. There was vibrators in here and other goodies <laughs> and sexual information that you two ladies have brought to us. All I can say is thank you from the bottom of my heart and vulva. Uh, I think they're from New Zealand. So. If they that are having a, yeah. if they're having a 20th anniversary party or something next year, send us an invite. Yeah, yeah. we'll be show up oh in New goodness. Zealand. Yes, it's just same shameless sex does New Zealand. Yeah, we want to. <laughs> I want to go to New Zealand. <laughs> hey Chip, before we read the next one, uh, I think you should put some Uber Lube in your mouth. Yeah, I know for your throat because and Lola, we were telling you, I'm like, this is my trick for um, a little bit of blowjob action. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'll excited. put a little bit of. It doesn't taste like anything. And it does coat my throat. So for this particular, because uh. my throat's just raspy and, you know, it's it's uh, difficult to speak right now. It just goes right through your body too. So just coat your throat hopefully a little bit. Hopefully some people think it sounds sexy. I know this is good. Or you can keep it like that. But <laughs> as you were speaking. I'm still <laughs> using this trick. Yeah, It's a good one. Yeah. I've, 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 see, I've seen other people do it like silicone lube. It just goes right through you and your body doesn't absorb it. So Does it yeah. sound less raspy yet? Yeah. Um, not. We'll see. Give it a minute. When I was little, I had the raspiest voice and I had super short hair. So everyone thought I, like, they didn't think I was a little girl. That sounds adorable. They were like, yeah. you're the cutest little boy. I'm like, I'm a girl. <laughs> and they're like, oh. oh when you had the perm. Yeah, the perm. Oh, my oh. gosh. Short it's, hair with the perm. And the glasses. And the glasses. And the fall sweater. It's just her. I saw her, like, <laughs> eight-year-old fo- school photos. Yeah. That I, I look at it when I'm feeling sad because it brings me joy. I was very... Um, Adorable. Well, I had, like, cat vests <laughs> and... <laughs> yes. Then leaves, like, felt leaves to my sweater sewn on that were, like, 3D. It was the 80s? Um, it was... Well, Late that's 80s. Yeah, that was yeah. the 80s. Late 80s. That, I was think I was nine, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, I was 90. Early, barely. Yeah. 1990. And a winner from yeah. day one. Oh. oh, yeah. April came out of the womb. Awesome. Anyway, my raspy <laughs> voice is back. I'm going to read one uh, more testimonial, and the title is titled Respectfully Disagree, and this is in regards to... Was this? Oh, it was the bonus episode that we just released? The parts unknown with the parts private unknown parts podcast, unknown? private mm-hmm. parts unknown podcast, and we were talking about uh, abortion on there because they did a segment ca- called "Men Have Abortions Too," mm-hmm. a three episode segment, and so we had we had our conversations. I don't remember exactly what we said on there, but this person says, "Firstly, I have been really enjoying your podcast over the last six months or so. You've opened my eyes." to lots of aspects of sex and sexuality that I'm so thankful for. I'm a politically moderate bi guy married with kids. I just wanted to let you know that even though I totally understand both sides of the abortion debate and appreciate the complexities of this discussion and of individuals who face excruciating circumstances surrounding the decision. However, I felt hurt by the way you addressed this topic. Demonizing conservative men and saying outright that they basically don't deserve a voice because they disagree with Democrats. I don't even know if we do we use the word Democrats, but maybe on the issue is very myopic. Progressives have framed this as a women's issue, while conservatives see this as a child rights issue. Women are important. Children on either side of the uterine wall are also important. When a conservative man who's not a douchebag speaks out against abortion, he's voicing for children's rights, not against women's rights or the or their own body. Of course, it gets complicated, but that's kind of like claiming that a man speaking out for women's rights to an abortion is pro-murder. Neither of those views appreciates or values the altruism inherent in each side of this very complex issue and shuts down any possibility of coming together in understanding we need all the voices as long as they are thoughtful, even the voices of people that disagree with us. Word. Okay. okay. <laughs> Word. Any, yeah, uh, yeah the, I... I appreciated i appreciate when people write things that disagree that are written in a way that's loving and um that's and, true and in coming you coming from a place of you know respectfully disagree you respectfully disagree I totally understand that um, and i don't remember what we i don't remember how, what we said and how we said I, it i don't remember talking about democrats because there are plenty of democrats that are you know, mm-hmm. pro-life. And yeah. so, however, it, it, I don't think it's necessarily a political 
uh, thing per se. I think when we talk about conservatives, it's just I think about it as conservative viewpoints yeah. uh, on certain things. That at least is where I came from. Um, and I think that people, if, if they're doing things um, because they need to or feel like they have to, it's their own choice. And mm. that's something that uh, stating your opinion in, in a loving way is also a, a really great thing to do mm-hmm. instead of kind of uh, what came up I believe in that discussion was someone made a comment on your social media page too that was about oh, yeah. abortion. Do you ever think of the the child you killed or yeah. however they said that? Because like, she was giving love to her friends' children, and then someone right. wrote out on her personal knowing that I had an Instagram abortion. Page. And I don't know if this person is talking about that. It might be some of our opinions about specifically saying that. Um, other other people shouldn't get to choose for our bodies what what we choose in that. So, and this person is saying it's you know it, they're not necessarily speaking to a woman's rights; they're speaking for uh, their personal beliefs of that about the value of the life that is inside the uterus. Right. And it, and I mean, and I understand that part of it. I personally get super upset. I mean, when I had an abortion, and I went there at eight a.m. and they only do abortions on Saturday morning, and you have. You know, the 65-year-old white guy with a picket sign out there in front while I'm going in there to go do a really hard thing. I always just take offense to the fact that anybody says it's so easy. And it's like, I too had an abortion. And I too had to get up really early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And a friend had to go with me because my mom refused to. And I was at that point living on my own and like afraid and this friend had to pretend they were family because I actually had it done in the hospital because I my mom did let me use her insurance Mm -hmm. like okay yay but it was not easy and I just remember like sitting I was living in a basement apartment alone working at Kmart Mm -hmm. and it's like um no like I just couldn't and I remember there was a small bit, but I'm like, I don't want to live the life that I lived with my mom, who was a single teen mom. Mm-hmm. And I had a really rough growing up. And not to say that I would be my mom, but there's just something to say about the the way, the quality of life and how things fall out when you don't have a lot of money. And it's not necessarily about being marginalized, but that plays a part. But also just being 18, 19 and not being in a space where somebody's going to give you a 22 hour paying job, like dollar an hour job. And this was in the early nineties, like early two thousands, late nineties, early two thousands. So it's like, well, childcare and school and all of you. Like, how can I do any of that? And then, but the fact that people begrudge that they don't want you to be able to go to college. Like they're mad. They're Mm -hmm. mad when, like my high school had a nursery mm-hmm. for for teen moms so they could graduate, and people wanted to close the program. So it's like mm. you you talk all this stuff, but then what if instead of trying to tell everybody we're awful for getting abortions, what if we worked on making life easier for people who have made these life mistakes? Mm. And when they think about it, if they're like, oh. I don't have to drop out of school because my school offers this and mm-hmm. I will have child care and I can still go to college because my college offers child care and like I can afford to like do these things. Think about the people who wouldn't have mm-hmm. because of those things. And then there's still might whoop, there still yeah. might be people who decide to, but it's never an easy thing. But also having kids isn't easy. And yeah. all of these people, it's like you don't want any of these children. Mm-hmm. If you did you would be offering to adopt them. Mm-hmm. You would be like out the, the orphanages and would not be overrun. We wouldn't have kids aging out of adoption. Yeah. Like right now in New York, I don't remember the percentage, but we have so many kids aging out. Well, mm-hmm. for the mm-hmm. foster system, have you met yeah. kids that have been in that system, especially <laughs> kids that have been in it for a long time? Yeah. I have met many mm-hmm. and it's, scary mm-hmm. and i we we actually have a really good mutual friend that has a, a, a kid that they adopted uh her and her partner that had had been in the system and and um had had several kids as part of that program um before that and it mm-hmm. was it's so hard and those kids are and the older they get the the and it's just um it's really scary they get mm-hmm. schlepped around like they do like luggage yeah. and like- it's there's not a lot of hope for them no mm-hmm. a lot of them end up 
in various places that once they age out there's literally nothing in place for the fact that you don't have a family support system you end up not having a place to live because you're 18 and now the government's responsibility good luck to going to figure out your like start yeah it's yeah yeah. so all this stuff is like yes loving and thank Mm -hmm. you for saying things but it's like you can talk about the and i also just am not a person that believes that this tiny mass of cells is a child yeah, i'm not gonna call I don't, it that i don't, yeah, I don't either yeah. and, uh you know that's like calling every egg in my body a child mm-hmm. it's a potential maybe but it's not mm-hmm. yet and that you're not thinking of the whole picture mm-hmm. and the and all the things and that we have like kids that kids that do end up with parents who never really wanted them mm-hmm. and how many and like we've had so many cases in new york of children being hurt really bad by their parents or murdered Mm -hmm. and it just makes me cry because where are those people where are these people that care so much about what we do with our bodies yeah when we have like little nix marie browns Mm -hmm. who are being tied to chairs and tortured by their parents Uh, yeah you know they don't show up yeah and they're not there picketing these parents yeah why are you outside that why are you there you're outside of the planned parenthood with your sign or on the side of the road yeah Yeah. and i get and and i want i understand too that we want to create spaciousness for everyone to have their voices and their opinions. And that's, I mean, that's because we, we want to have ours too. Mm-hmm. So we want to give space. That's why I wanted to read this on here to say that, um, it'd be, and that's one thing that we've been doing. We, we have someone that writes us and they, where they say, you, you said something and this offended me or, and maybe not all of it. Like if the, we had that one person, so they wanted to jump off a bridge because we annoyed them. Mm, we're not going to, that doesn't really <laughs> work for us, but I want, I do want to give voices to, um, all all folks all their different opinions. opinions yeah and, and and i do appreciate this person writing in and saying their opinion of how they respectfully disagree and um and i don't again don't do not remember exactly what we, we said on there so if there was something that really was um, personally pointing a finger at you and saying you shouldn't have a voice don't remember if we said that if we did um i will own that that's not the um, right direction uh, that we that's not the direction we want to take so um yeah just wanted to Put that in there. And um, anything else we want to add to that before I go into a sex question that's a whole different angle? <laughs> yeah. No. All right. Let's make this fun and exciting now. <laughs> Gets heated. I'm sweating <laughs> over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, somebody. Okay. <clears throat> Should I lose my virginity to an escort? Ooh. I'm a 22-year-old straight male virgin, and I've never had a girlfriend. Not for lack of trying. I've dated here and there, but nothing ever too serious or long-lasting. It sort of ruined my confidence in being able to get rid of... Oh, to get, see, I can't read today. Yeah, it's important. To get a girl for at least the time being. I looked around a bit and found a woman, um, I think it's a sex worker or an escort, I'd actually want to be with. She spends time to make a connection with her clients. She sells her time rather than her body. And personally, I would value making a connection with her rather than lose my virginity in a mechanical way. I grew up Christian and I've been saving myself. Now that I've walked away from the church, a bit. I don't hold the same convictions. I would love to meet someone, fall in love, and share that experience together. But the chances of finding someone who is also a virgin, also wants to wait until marriage, and actually likes me back are slim unless I go back to the church, which as of now I refuse to because the evangelical church is fucking insane. Their words, not mine. I just want to, <laughs> just disclaimer, I just want to know what it feels like to make a connection with a woman, both physically and emotionally, and this seems like a feasible route. Thanks for your advice. I wonder if there are uh, websites or, or dating mm-hmm. apps for folks that are religious on some Christian sort. Mingle? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't want to throw that out. I'm sure there's got to be some that are, I'm, you know, promoting other virgins mm-hmm. on whatever level. I don't know. Other virgins. Like a virgin dating app. Site. Yes. I've never virgin heard of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or that it will it'll kind of note if they're virgins or something on yeah. part of their profile so maybe they can connect to each other. I don't know, but... Yeah. Um, Should I Google that right now and see if there's maybe. a virgin dating? See, the thing, if there's a virgin dating app site, there would be some people who were coming in there with a whole different intention looking for those. That was, yeah. Yeah. I, but maybe there is. Well, yeah. you never yeah. know. Yeah. And I just, I, I, I'll just say briefly, because I'd love Lola to well, answer. I'm wondering why, why they have to be with another virgin. Is my, I guess they're thinking well, yeah. from the aim of... When they say save themselves, I wonder if there there hasn't been any even masturbation. Yeah, like if it's been that to that oh, degree because yeah. of ev- ev- evangelical, evangelical yeah. <laughs> Christianity. Yeah, and then I guess it's the yeah that you because if if you want to be married, eventually you're supposed to find a virgin. And I guess they're keeping. Is it worth keeping those all those values in place? Yeah, in order to find somebody to have sex with. 
But then I'm like, well, why, why not take the route of just dating Mm -hmm. and being honest and like maybe casual dating. There are people out there that do not mind taking someone's virginity. Yeah. Like taking someone's virginity. It gets me every Virginity is a a social construct. You stole it from me. You took it. Yeah. But that's, I yeah. I wonder, because it seems like there's the whole, like, either I'm going to go all in mm-hmm. or I'm going to be with a sex worker, which I'm yeah. not against. I'm not, yeah, I'm not against I that I think idea. it's a great alternative to yeah. kind of, uh, you know, trying your luck with, with a dating app or with meeting someone organically, mm-hmm. which can be difficult too. And if meeting another, that, w- that was my whole take was meeting another virgin was important to this person. Right. Can I just also give the, a shout out to the fact that I love that this person's listening to our podcast yeah. all about sex and relationships. And I, that really yeah. actually brings me a bit of joy because they care and they're doing their best to sort of get enough knowledge to yeah. be probably mm-hmm. a great sexual being on yeah. whatever level. If you just want to get over the hump, like if it's yeah. a kind of thing yeah. of feeling like I'm 22, I don't want to have the shame of feeling I never was with anybody and being with somebody who this is their work and they can guide you and mm-hmm. you don't have to worry about feeling awkward yeah. and doing everything right mm-hmm. and who you can tell like, hey, this is my first time. That could come in really handy as far as your having confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then I say go for it. Yeah. Because if it's just like I just don't want to carry this burden of being my age and being a virgin, which you don't. Yeah, it's not. A sh- I mean, it's, it's not, it's not a shameful of. thing. Yeah. yeah, being a twenty-two-year-old virgin is not something that I. That I mean, I, I'm not saying they feel shame, so that's right. yours to feel. I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel it, but I wouldn't look at you and say, "Oh, that's you know, you sh- you should feel ashamed." Right. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that, and and you have you know, the way that you were raised. There's reasons why this is. Uh, this is your experience. So, but but yeah. So I guess for me, it'd be like, what is. What is the intention? Is it to get just to get it out of the way, you know, right. Right. so that or but or which if it's that I'm wondering, like, wh- wh- I don't know if it's why, why that is. Why do you need to have this thing so that now you feel better when you share with someone that you have had sex and then you'll look different and feel less shameful. But I like what you said, Lola, about um, about it, have, having the experience you actually can maybe learn from it, mm-hmm. feel more confident, more skilled, perhaps with someone that is more skilled. And honestly, I think having sex with someone who is experienced in having sex when you are not is probably going to be a lot smoother than having <laughs> sex with someone else who's never had sex before. Yeah. What mm-hmm. else? It has such stigma sex when yeah. you have never had it. I mean, I gave it so much of this, so much weight when you don't know what it's going to be like. Is it going to hurt? Is it going to feel great? Yeah. And then you don't even think about really the exchange of energy or what you're doing. You're just focused on the actual, the act of right. whatever the sex looks like. Did you, when April, when you had sex for the first time, was it with someone else who had never had sex before? No, it was with, um, the guy that a, I don't like. Yeah. I don't like that It was guy. a, it was a him, person that had, like <laughs> had quite a bit of sex. If you're listening, I'm mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he was, putting quite a bit of pressure on me because I was don't like him even more 16. Now. <laughs> it was, I t- was turning 17 in July and it was in June that I had sex for the first time. And he had been putting pressure on me because we had been dating since maybe like February or mm. April. And so he was, you know, really wanting that. And so, but how was I the just, actual sex? I, Oh, not even, even though he had some experience, it still was. <laughs> no, it was not good. He was a very, uh, selfish, well, I learned later. I didn't know yeah. at the time, but a very selfish uh, partner. He like sex in when in dealing with sex. It was always as soon as he came, it was over. Uh, mm-hmm. I never had one orgasm with him. He never went down on you. Uh, or did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Um, but that's the person I ripped my labia in half with. Oh. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mad at you, bro. So, <laughs> so that being said, there was like not a lot of, uh, not a lot of aftercare ever. Yeah. I would be like, I never really gave him a blowjob because I had weird uh, stuff around that. But anyway, point being, I didn't know how to enjoy sex. I did, in the end, want to get it over with as well because. I was getting pressure from this person mm-hmm. that I didn't want to leave me yeah. because I was that in high school was... and he was in college and there was all these elements that aren't even important. And I didn't value myself at the time. Yeah. And then he gave me an STD as, you know, oh. the, the icing on the, yep. the cake. Yeah, that happens. Still mad at you. But. So this is, I think, with the sex worker question, 
uh, that piece of this question. Mm -hmm. I say, I love the the confidence piece and gaining experience. If that, that, that could be something, if you are feeling, you just want to really move through the, the hump of not having any experience with sex with another human. If you have masturbated and have had your own uh, sexual experience with yourself of pleasure, then awesome. And if that feels like it's not enough for you now, and you want to go into an experience with someone else, I say, if a sex worker that you're connecting with is into it, um, it. and you, you, it's not just so, you know, someone you call and they just come over, you want the connection. Cause that's what it seems like. I think hundred percent. Yeah. Do that. Do yeah. it. But also explore your body. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. such a fan of, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always like, fuck waiting till you're married yeah. and have sex just cause yeah. you don't know yourself and how can you tell somebody what you need and mm-hmm. how do you, and like masturbation is great and you get to like discover your body, but how you how you like match up with someone else and what you like when you're in a room with somebody else and Mm -hmm. just the like I've been with people where I was like if I would have waited and married you and waited to have sex I would have been so sad (laughs) your chemistry was off or whatever it's true because there are there's a different you you approach something new with a partner Mm -hmm. and I you know when the different people that I've had sexual experiences with some of them I was so attracted to physically but as soon as we started kissing or getting down with each other it was not any any Mm -hmm. I was like nope I'm good and there would have been no community no amount of communication could have changed what I was experiencing with them it was just like our chemistry is just not right yeah yeah okay there is something to be said about chemistry and from my you know hippie dippy santa cruz perspective that some people might agree with it that there's some that unspoken energy that you know know, we can be i can be super attracted to someone you know their 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 looks i can be attracted to their personality to the brain and yet there's an energy there that is not connecting right you know the minute our body is such it's just like there's something off and everything else seems right there's something off here I, I mean, I believe that that that's a thing, and so yeah, I agree with, with checking things out before. And maybe it isn't, you know, a penis in an orifice. You know, maybe it's, there's other ways you can figure out if bodies mm-hmm. are compatible. Um, so maybe, maybe there is something that you save for a marriage if that's really important to you. But yeah, go yeah. check, go Heavy check it petting. out. Heavy it's petting, great. the heavier. Mm. See, I saved <laughs> anal for the person I think, you know, I'm going to spend the quantity of my life with. Did you choose to really say, did you were like, I'm not, I do say you did not. Okay. You did not say. No, I really did because I wanted to have a present for them. With, no, with, with like my ex-husband and then it just never, never got there. And then it just like never felt right. And then I was like, I want to have a, like, and I was like, but I'm going to save it for a person that I want to spend really a significant that? amount of time with. And oh my now God. my partner, now he obviously, uh, we have a lot of experience in the anal department now, but it was, I was like, yes, I, I wasn't necessarily. <laughs> Necessarily <laughs> consciously saving my anal oh my virginity, if you will. I just something new Did you whisper you? this in their ear? Yeah. Like, I saved this for you. <laughs> this is for you. Did you wrap a bow on your ass? <laughs> no, but I did have a kit that had the bow, the ass bow thing. <laughs> Wait, the, these they have like a anal. No, she made her own. Kit? I think. Oh, okay. no, it's like this underwear that oh. ties in the back, and I was like, okay. you can unwrap the present. I thought it would be like just oh, ritualistic and kind of fun. You just got even cuter in my book. <laughs> it was. Uh, it's got, I didn't end up using the underwear, by the way. See, yeah. Most people give up anal first because it's less sinful, apparently. I right. know that's what all the Catholic girls. Need. Yeah, that's what. They're, yeah, they're like, oh yeah, this is a uh, this one is this one's safe. I heard too many horror stories. When I was like about younger, anal? about anal, oh. before I was actually knowledgeable about sex, where I was like, "Oh, you just terrible r- things that are not true." Yeah. So that being said, that was where my fear came in. And your butt's well, gonna fall out. I didn't do research. Yeah. Out, yeah. Or yeah. yeah. Well, and then there's also like most people, they're just shoving it. Porn is not teaching them how mm-hmm, to do it. Mm-hmm. We have all kinds of episodes on anal. Everyone, we could talk about this for days. It's my favorite topic. It is. It's <laughs> um, and if you want to learn more, go back to August, and we have anal August episodes on there, and you can learn more. Anything else you want to say to this person? Good luck. Good luck to you. And and yeah thank you for writing us may the pleasure be with you <laughs> is that our new tagline uh, maybe may the pleasure of, be with you my star wars references <laughs> all right i'm going to read lol it's funny reading the bio when the person is here because usually we do this but we're in person which is so much more fun love in person episodes okay so dirty lola is a sex edutainer said it right yes 
speaker, and self-proclaimed dildo slinger, known for her live sex ed Q&A show, Sex Ed A Go-Go, and as co-host of New York Magazine's The Cuts Sex Probs web series, Lola has spent almost a decade working to end stigma and shame surrounding sex and sexuality. Having started her journey sharing personal discoveries with polyamory and kink online, Lola now uses her knowledge, warm candor, and public platforms to teach the masses in person and to wrap internet audiences. To learn more, go check out her website at sexedagogo.com. Are you all ready to dive in? I yes. can't wait. But first... This podcast is made possible by Manscaped. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for you or your man's family jewels. I'm personally a huge fan of a well-trimmed bush. That's why I recently gave my partner Manscaped's redesigned electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 2.0, and he absolutely loves it. With its skin-safe technology, this trimmer won't nick or snag any nuts. Manscaped also has a crop cleanser, a crop reviver, a.k.a. for your goods, and best of all, the crop preserver, a fabulous ball deodorant for anti-chafing. Dripping with perspiration from living life on the go, going for a sweaty bike ride, or perhaps you're getting clammy during the awkward first date, Manscaped's crop preserver will keep you fresh and dry just when you need it. And guess what? Our listeners get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHAMELESS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code SHAMELESS and your bits will thank you for it. This podcast was also made possible by your super. Did you know that 9 out of 10 people don't get enough fruits and vegetables? When you don't get the proper nutrition, you increase your risk for chronic illnesses. And despite being pretty health conscious ourselves, it's still difficult to get all the whole foods our bodies require with our busy lives. That's one of the many reasons why we love Your Super. They make it easy for us to get the nutrients our bodies need to thrive. Your Super's superfood and plant protein mixes are made from organic, whole superfoods and nothing else. I love knowing that the Super Green Mix is keeping my immune system healthy and strong, and it's also an easy way to get a serving of greens. I add it to my morning smoothies, on top of my oats, because you all know I love oats, on top of my salads, and anywhere in between. And don't even get me started about the chocolate lover's mix. And guess what? Our listeners get 15% off when you use code SHAMELESS at YourSuper.com. That's Y-O-U-R Super.com with code SHAMELESS for 15% off. Go get your health on. And now, back to the show. And we're back. We went really far. Still at the same table. Let's talk about sex after a big life shift. Lola. So... I actually, it was so interesting. I was talking to a client last week. I, some, my client sometimes will call me at first for like a 10 minutes. Like, I need help. And just gave them some advice. And they were some, they, they had been married. I forgot how long it is, but 20 plus years, maybe 30 years. I don't know. And their partner passed away. Mm. And so now they are starting to be sexually, you know, dating again, sexually active again uh, with new, with new people after this huge life shift. And they, and they were like, you know, is there any episodes I should listen to? I was like, well, isn't this kind of perfect? We are recording this episode and we're, you know, we're not necessarily, the huge life shift doesn't need to be someone passing away. Um, So maybe you can start to share what that is. You know, what, what is a huge life shift and how does, how does sex change after that? And your own, you have your own experiences too, I'm sure. Yeah. So my huge life shift was, or is, it's so weird because we're not legally divorced yet, but we're getting there. But a, a divorce. Um, and it's been about it. It's been over a year. It's going to be two. No. Yeah. Okay. In February, you said, right? Well, February I moved. Oh, so okay. it'll be two years in November since he asked for the divorce Mm -hmm. and there was no period of like, maybe we won't do, I think there was like 24 hours of maybe we won't do it. And then he was like, no, no, I want, I want to do this. Mm. Um, and we were open. Mm -hmm. So relationship, open relationship. Uh So, but things hadn't been great Mm -hmm. and I hadn't been, we weren't really having a lot of sex Mm -hmm. and I was thankfully having sex with partners, but all my partners, live or lived out of town Mm -hmm. um so going through this big massive change like everything kind of just left my body like I totally left my mojo like I didn't feel I didn't even feel sexy anymore I'm a self-proclaimed slut and I was just like nothing 
felt good or right. And it, I didn't even know how to, like, I was lonely and swiping on all the sites, Mm -hmm. but not, but just like so much was happening emotionally that it just felt like it would be too much work or too much. And like, how do I talk to somebody about what am I, what I'm going through? And, and like the, the D word is always like a, right. And it scares people away because like, I don't want to deal with that drama. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, I get that. So for me, it was just this big, like I kind of became dormant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And well, like, I, like what you're saying with all the, the thing, this, there's so much going on for you. All your energy is going to. That. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. wore the divorcee, like a crown. I was like, I'm a divorcee. Cause I was like, I thought it was well, for a little awesome. bit. It was hard for you. You eventually yeah. wore it. Well, I did. But when you were going through, when I was that, going through it, I wasn't trying to date anyone. But right. then when I started coming into my power, yeah, I did the same isolation thing. But I was like, I'm a divorcee, and I give zero fucks. I'm very excited to yeah. be actually legally divorced. Yeah. Like I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna get a white nighty. I'm gonna drink <laughs> yeah. Chardonnay. I'm gonna take bubble bath. Like I'm here for it, and I can make fun of myself now. And I'm actually like, oh. <laughs> at first I was like, I'm, I'm 38 and I'm going to be divorced. I'm like, nah, girl, listen, you've had some life experience. Yeah. This is going to be a chapter in your book. <laughs> like, yeah. So I'm coming into that, but it was just really hard. And you were together for 17 years. We were together for 17 years. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a long time. It's a very long time. Yeah. But also I'm at that time of my life where you don't want to be starting over. Yeah. Like all my friends are just have gotten married like maybe a handful of years ago and they're having babies and I n- we never wanted kids. I still don't want kids I like them when they're other people's, but I don't <laughs> want them. But it, it felt so like, Oh my God, like I have to start all the way over. And I never, I didn't have a normal like twenties. We were already to live, living together yeah. when I was 20. So I didn't have like a normal dating life. I didn't, live alone Mm -hmm. i lived with a roommate for a couple years and then i moved in with my ex so i never had like that kind of life and i was terrified you didn't know what it was like to be no like i don't know i only heard bad rumors yeah yeah because people always complain when they're single for they're always i mean we have friends that talk about it all the time how hard it is to be single so much and then you have new york city which gets all of this it's so hard to be single so i can imagine you were probably feeling really scared so scared but also because i'd gotten a taste of being single and dating by jumping into the dating world when we opened up and every time i'm like how do y'all do this Mm -hmm. i have a husband to go back home to so it made like all the bullshit okay Mm -hmm. i don't know how people (laughs) exist in a world and date solo because it's hard Mm -hmm. and i was comforted by like okay i have a partner who when i have a bad date i go home and snuggle with well then you have the ghosting element now yeah catfishing now all the things you've got all of these new challenges in the dating world that people talk about Mm. and and i yeah so much yeah so much so i wasn't looking forward to any of that and not having somebody to go home to and I just didn't have the energy. And I don't I don't think I realized how much I shut down. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think I realized how much I was really boxing out people. Even my partner, like one of my partners who became, we were seeing each other a lot more even though he lives across the country and we do similar things. So we were at a bunch of stuff together. And I realized like I'm kind of not being the best to you. Not being mean, mm-hmm. but I was really shutting down. Mm-hmm. And thank goodness he's patient because... Mm-hmm. I was just really in my own like survival mode and healing. Yeah. And so would you say that you, cause you said that you said that he was patient, that it was really important for you to take that time to go through all like, as part of this big life shift that you needed that part of that is not just, you know, jumping to the, onto the next thing because right. you know, obviously you say you didn't have capacity anyways, but I right. think that's what a lot of people do it, whether it, when they're, when there's some, or with heartbreak, you know, mm-hmm. they like, okay, got to go do the thing so I can feel good. Fill and, the and, void. And, right. and so it sounds like you needed that even in, even while, dating you needed you need still needed to feel all those yeah. pieces and we were we were having sex and it was not it was comforting to have sex with him when we were together because it made me feel like okay you're not a complete and utter failure at everything mm-hmm. and somebody still 
it was really hard for that to sink in that somebody was still attracted to me. Mm. Oh. And I think that helped that somebody wanted to have sex with me and mm. was still very attracted to me. And so seeing him in these, like, every few months, every three to four months was so helpful, these little blips. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think we would be together if he lived here because I wouldn't have been able to be in that kind of deep relationship with somebody so close. Mm -hmm. It was really easy where it's like, I get home and I can cry and I don't have to entertain you. And, you know, we talk when we talk and those things. And that helped. And I needed, I did need that. But I needed it to come from somebody who already was invested in me. It wouldn't have worked coming from somebody who was just, I swiped and we matched yeah. and maybe had a drink. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would be okay. Or it would have been a very unhealthy, weird attachment to someone. Mm -hmm. And so I was lucky to have somebody who came in at the tail end of things, who like eked in right before all the emotional upheaval happened. And... And that we were far away from each other because mm -hmm. I needed that space. Even though I hated it and I was sad a lot and just wanted somebody to hold me all the time, mm -hmm. I needed that kind of space to just be with myself, which is real hard. Yes, that's so <laughs> Sitting with yourself that's the hardest. Hard. Do yeah. you think that if it, the one piece, and I know you're still going through some of the, the changes and uh, the one, like a recommendation for folks that maybe are newly broken up. Uh, would be to kind of sit with themselves and do the work on themselves yeah. and not go into a rebound space? Or do you think it's more kind of find someone to help like, with that, but keep it really, I mean, what, what do you, what would you suggest? I think if you can do it in a healthy way, which I don't, I don't, I, I think I would have made a lot of bad choices. Yeah. I don't, I couldn't, even in the moment, I knew I wasn't going to make healthy choices. I was doing things that were already unhealthy. Like I have an ex-sugar daddy who I had reached out to. And I'm like, why? He's my ex for a reason. And I reached out to him. And I was like, I just want to have sex. And and we had made a plan. And I ended up canceling it. Because I was like, this is you're good. This is going to hurt. Like mm -hmm. your heart. Like you're not. You're an ex for a reason. He was not cool. And you're just doing this. This is going to damage you in a way that's not going to feel good later. And I just remember sitting, looking at my phone like, no. I had fully gotten dressed and put on makeup. And I'm like, I can't. I can't go. Because I was, I, I knew in that moment, I was like, this is not a healthy thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not making good choices. Take that fucking dress off. Like it was, so I think it's a thing of, thankfully I had other people. Like I have a very strong friend system who I could reach out to when I was falling apart and just like, Hey y'all, this is where I am. Um, I was using other people to gauge stuff. Cause there was a lot of gaslighting that happened within our relationship, especially towards the end. So mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know if I'm like, I don't even know how my brain works anymore. I don't know if I'm doing something good or bad or what's happening. Can I tell you a thing? And you tell me mm -hmm. like, I needed that. And it's a lot. Like when you feel like you need things, thank God for sex toys. Yeah. Yeah. And I had stopped, I had even stopped masturbating. Yeah. Like I stopped having sex time with myself for a very big solid time. And I realized that like, cause I used to always like every day, mm -hmm. every day or every night. And I just wasn't. And I'm like, girl, you won't even fuck yourself. Like yeah. how are you going to fuck somebody else? Yeah. You can't, you know, it was yeah. like, I can't go out there. And so I think it, it helped to sit and cry. Mm -hmm. It helped to get through the rough, the roughest bits, mm -hmm. the crying, the being a mess and not bringing somebody else into it because who knows how that's going to fall out. Well, the support of your friends, I think that was a really good point because you need to, being with yourself is one thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's so lonely though when you're yeah. like, I don't have any, I don't have this person anymore, this person to fall back on. I mean, yeah. that's the scary thing. And for me, I, I, I was I remember being like, I don't have an emergency contact. Yo! I'm like, I'm 34 and I don't have, my it mom's going to be in my, the heart. Was, yeah. yeah. And I remember going through that whole beating myself up over being this single person in my mid thirties and mm -hmm. feeling that that was a terrible thing, which yeah. I'm like, it's not a terrible thing. I didn't, you know, I, I didn't do anything that was uh, d deserving of feeling this way. Right. And so it was, I, I feel like the support of friends and, or if you, you don't feel like you can talk to your friends, maybe your friends were intertwined yeah. so deeply with the person that, cause that can get even scarier. Yeah. Am I going to lose all my friends too? Yes. Yeah. That's a hard one. That's as well. yeah. really hard. And I, 
luckily have a group of friends who I met through doing the work I do. Mm-hmm. And so they knew of him. I don't think maybe one or two of them had met him, but nobody was his friend. Like nobody was in connected to yeah. him. Mm-hmm. So I had all these people who only knew me and weren't connected to him because I also didn't want to do the whole thing of like, I don't want you to have to feel like you have to choose sides. I don't yeah. want, I don't want to cry on your shoulder and have you like hate him about it because that's not, how I want to do this, but having people I could cry and vent to yeah. when he was being awful and say like, is he really being awful or am I imagining things? Mm-hmm. And also the skin hunger is real, like mm-hmm. not being Oxytocin, hugged and yeah, touched. Yeah. And like that became a thing for me, even living in a house with him for a year. I don't think I touched a human for a days, weeks, mm-hmm. months until I was at a conference and with friends. And I, I remember January was I went to playground conference and just being around so many people. And I just remember like crying cause I just from being hugged mm-hmm. cause I hadn't been hugged and felt love and mm-hmm. just, it was just hard. It had been months and I didn't, you kind of block it out that nobody's touched you mm-hmm. that even in like a lovely loving way. And so that was a big thing. So I'm, I'm If I had the knowledge, I would, like, try to connect with friends, If even just to have, like, can we hug or Mm -hmm. get a weighted blanket. A weighted blanket. Weighted blankets. Because learning how to sleep alone, again, was very hard. Or a long pillow that you can hug. Or I made a nest. That was my thing. Is I When we had to buy another bed for me, I bought the bed I wanted and the mattress I wanted and all the pillows Mm -hmm. and... I it, I called it my nest and it was the perfect and still is. I love my bed. We we're in a long term relationship together. Mm. Um, you, in it the, was, you in the bed? Me in the <laughs> yeah, bed. It's true. My bed always yeah. loves me. Like yeah. Drake said, I only love my bed and my mama. Because <laughs> um, my bed, it just became this like, I know I'm going to be comfortable. I know I'm going to be soothed. Mm. And I just made it this place I could go. It was also kind of reclaiming this space that becomes like a, your bed is like, sleep and sex and yeah. all these things that are important oh, you need to cleanse that yeah. Yeah, yeah and so having a new bed that he mm. had never slept in new sheets mm. new sheets new pillows yeah. that i got to pick out that yeah. weren't colors that we had to choose and so all of that stuff was really important for me to do and it helped a lot and it helped that i put my comfort first and there were some days that i did not get out of that bed so that bed became like this really important part of my life Mm -hmm. that I'm like my bed got me through my bed and my partner Mm -hmm. got me through that year and my friends it's it was I was lucky to have those things in place and not knowing they were in place Mm -hmm. but I don't think I would have I don't know what would have happened but I I wouldn't have made it out in such a good headspace as I did that support right one and one thing I I saw everyone who's listening I sleep with a teddy bear me too it's it's a it's it's like and it's a good it's almost like the size of it's like my forever bigger than legend it's a good size yeah it's a good size teddy bear it's not like a massive teddy bear it's one that I can wrap my body around Mm. and um and this is when when I sleep alone if I have someone sleep in my bed I'm not like all right I'm gonna smoke my teddy bear (laughs) (laughs) hello new partner I'm gonna yeah me and the teddy bear though um but in in there's some Something about it after I went through my breakup um, have, from sleeping next to someone for so long and being a snuggle machine, um, that having something I can hold my arms around, yeah. just, it makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. And then I also want to bring up um, the professional cuddlists. Yeah. I mean, there aren't, and you, I mean, granted, they're probably not in the middle of like, you know, a Kansas. lot of our, yeah, Kansas, right? Yeah. But, yeah. but there are people who are professional cuddlists there, there where you pay. And so they, I mean, I don't know if you put them under the kind of umbrella term of sex work, but that you can literally pay for someone to like hold you and cuddle you. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is something you, that you can look up. And there's, so there's, there are ways, because there are people who listen they're like, yeah, well, what if I don't have friends like right. that? You know, well, what if you I don't get have a dog or a cat? Yeah, yeah. A pet. You can get a, yeah, an animal yeah. of some sort. But oh. that, yeah, that touch thing is a real, is real. I felt that before. That it almost is like my skin is crawling because I'm so hungry. I felt that in a partnership. But, you know, wow, there was some touch, but it just was, you know, being withheld. Yeah. And you, it's almost this, like, cr- creepy, crawly, like, oh, I'm just so hungry for this this thing. Okay, y'all, time for a quick break. This podcast is made possible by some of our favorite things. 
Uber Lube is one of them. It's a luxurious lubricant great for all kinds of sex. It's less likely to throw off your pH than most other lubes. Seriously? There are hundreds of doctors who recommend Uber Lube to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks who are experiencing dryness. Amy, I know you love Uber Lube too. What do you love? I love Uber Lube because it has no flavor, no scent, and it feels absolutely amazing on my body. In fact, I want it everywhere. I even use it in my hair, for my hair frizzies, for massage, and it can also prevent chafing. Oh, and the bottle is gorgeous. It's discreet and looks like a beautiful cosmetic product, so you can leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, go check out uberlube.com. Use coupon code SHAMELESSSEX and you get 10% off and free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com, code SHAMELESSSEX and 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS is a research-based online program that helps you add more sexy things to your menu. OMGS studied thousands of vulva owners to find out how they orgasm and then made tasteful and inspiring short videos to show you techniques on how to pleasure yourself or another vulva. Amy, tell us why you love OMGS. I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it has changed their lives. Whether you're already having good orgasms and want to have even better orgasms, or perhaps you want to explore more variety in your playtime or even learn how to pleasure someone else's vulva, OMGS will have something for you. With two seasons, one all about internal and the other all about external techniques, it's better than any book or DVD that money can buy. To learn more, visit omgs.com backslash shameless and our listeners get $5 off. That's omgs.com backslash shameless. You get $5 off. Go check it out now. And back to the show. Isolation is the it's the killer of the the brain and the the I mean that's why they put people in solitary confinement. Yeah. Right? And that's oh like the worst gosh. punishment that you can possibly do to a human. So yeah. even though it feels like you want to isolate and pull yourself away from any interaction or any situation unless you have to go to work, mm-hmm. uh, it's so important to get some the touch and even just hugging someone or holding someone's yep. hand. Or mm-hmm. go out for co- like Yeah. Going out for coffee, doing things. I started cat sitting because it got me out of the apartment. Oh, that's so good, yeah. And I could stay at the the places I was cat sitting, so it got me into a new environment. And mm-hmm. I was also practicing being single, mm-hmm. so I could, it was hard to practice being single, living still living with someone. Mm-hmm. But I had these stretches where I got to like go grocery shopping just for me, and like how I, how are you going to live when you live alone? Mm-hmm. And this is my how the pattern of my life would go, and so it made it less terrifying. Yeah. That I could still do these things because when you are part of a unit, like you do take on like I'll do these set of things and you'll do these set of things because that's partnership and this is how we help each other. But then when you have to split and you realize like I haven't done these things for 17, fu- mm-hmm. like I hadn't paid a bill oh, or written to- a rent check for 17 years. When I went moved into my house, <laughs> I, new house, I was doing the same thing as you. Like I'm going to buy the girliest diva worthy things yeah. in my house I called it the lady lair I had one full bedroom of like my dressing Shoes. room yes. it was all for me I was like nope I'm gonna be a glutton for whatever I want all the things but I couldn't and this I'm, I, I couldn't hang my own pictures because I'm super uh, like, I want someone to hold it for me and then I need to look at it I want things to be even yeah. and then just dr- drilling a hole in the wall and make so I was like oh my god hanging my curtain rods that yeah. stuff I was couldn't believe that I had lost some of not that I lost the skills but that I that I wasn't able to do those things paying yeah. the bills yeah get yourself a handy fem yeah. I have a handy fem friend who literally part of my friend group who came into town from DC came over I had made a list and we did it together like she didn't just do things for me yeah. but we did it together and she was like so hey this is the best way to like when you're hanging art and like let's do this and but she came in and she made it less overwhelming and mm. we went to the store and bought the things and she talked me through like, Hey, so if you're hanging this, you might want this. Mm-hmm. And if you're doing this, that helped so much because he had been, always been the person like he liked to put together yeah. the Ikea furniture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that he didn't let, it was just like, he's like, no, I like it. Like, it's cool. Go, you know, do another project. Okay, cool. I'll go do this. And so moving in here, I put everything together except for my bed because 
we had to take it apart to move it and he had put it together so he took it apart and knew how to put it back I was oh, like that's yeah. all you yeah because there are no instructions anymore oh, so yeah. But yeah, like just every like piece of furniture that came in. Them is good because I yeah. was a little nervous about just inviting a handy man right. into my my house mm-hmm. when I'm um, a handy human that you didn't know. Yeah, where yeah. I was like, oh, I met yeah. you on Craigslist. Can you Ooh. come and hang some things for me? I'm a single lady all by myself. I'll make yeah. you lemonade. And, yeah. yeah, it's the fifties. It was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just was a little you nervous little about that. But that's a good. I like that. Handy yeah. Thing. And what about so? Because I think. For a lot of folks, because if we go back to the sex piece too, and if you're so if you here, and this can be for a number of things. Say you've been having sex with the same person for twenty years. In your case, you were still had an experience of being intimate with other people, right? Um, or and also bringing this to uh, folks who just have a major life shift, like maybe they have, you know, they have, have cancer. And someone passes away or, or, or yeah. sex, being sexual is taken off the table for oh, yeah. a big chunk of time. And now all of a sudden it's like time to be sexual again, whether it's with the same partner or brand new partners. And you've taken such a you know big, big space from or been only been having sex with one person. And um, one of the, 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 the pieces of advice that I was giving to some folks that I've talked to that have gone through that is almost regarding your body as new. Like mm-hmm. it's, you know, you're obviously it is a fresh start. When your case, it is a fresh start in terms of moving into a new place and all these little details. But for some folks, you know, I think this could even apply to being in the same relationship with someone, but your body has significantly changed because of big life shift. Um, or, and so what would your advice be there in terms of like, the first time you have sex with someone brand new and after yeah. a huge life shift and how scary that is. Like what are some ways that people can maybe go about that? Be gentle with yourself. Mm. Just let people surprise you. It's hard. Like with all the baggage, mm. I own that I have baggage. I maybe have a few less bags at this point than I did, but coming in with so much baggage, even into sex became a thing Mm. of the expectation of what was coming. And my partner was still fairly new when all this fell out. So we were still discovering each other and all those things. And I was coming in with all this baggage and all this, like not feeling attractive and just everything. And the expectation of like, oh, you're just going to figure out that I'm awful mm. and you're going to figure out that I'm just not really sexy and you're going to figure all this out. And so that was what was happening for me. So just being gentle and being open to like believing people when they tell you why they're there in that moment and allowing that space for it to be awkward mm-hmm. and allowing that space for it to not be the this, magical but experience. Yeah. yeah. And it's great because my partner's a therapist, so like he knows feelings and mm-hmm. things and we were able to talk about that stuff and I was able to like we were able to process it afterwards and so everybody's not gonna find a therapist mm-hmm. partner. <laughs> um I mean you should, but no. Yeah. <laughs> but it being able to talk about it afterwards of like, hey, this is how this went for me and this is what came up for me. After, and after, after, after yeah, being intimate. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And this was where that spaciousness of space and time helped too, because we were able to process like, Hey, I think this is where I went in my head. And I think this is what comes up for me. And I was saying it to myself. I wasn't just telling him it was, I was processing for myself too of like, Oh, this is why you're feeling like this. Like, this is why you're here. Mm. Okay. Like we have to be nicer to ourselves and how can we, what can we do for ourselves to come out of it? And that became a thing. Cause I have a, a bottom subby. I'm a boss bitch sub. <laughs> like I'm just very there. And I'm so, I'm so in this taking care of other people mm-hmm. and this whole year has been how do I take care of me? Mm-hmm. How do I do acts of service for myself? Like how do we get back to a space where we feel sexy in our body? Because that switch is such, oh, like it's invisible but huge. Yeah. And I don't think I realized like how much damage had been done. And so when it gets flipped a little bit, it just, you're like, oh my God, whoa, mm-hmm. the lights are on. Yeah, they're on again. All the things. Yeah. And so it's like taking that time. It's taking the time and maybe rediscovering stuff. Maybe like, especially after you've gone through a health thing where your body has changed, it's that new body. Here I am. Okay. Now I have to relearn you. And it's not, I'm not trying to fix you. I'm relearning 
who we are. And for me, it was my body, things still were working the same, but also it was like I had told myself, oh, this is how we work. And I wasn't open to learning new things. And with this partner was like, oh, oh, we can come like this now. <laughs> oh, bitch. Okay. We got new things to add to the list. And, and But being open to it and not being in this space of like, no, this is not how it worked because it didn't work with this person forever. And so this must be how we like have to be. And being with somebody else, like now we, we're at two years with this partner. So that's another like long term somebody knowing your body, which is a gift. Because mm-hmm. um, it's hard when, you know, I love casual sex, but it, the learning curve is real short and mm-hmm. you're hoping that you match. And, you, and sometimes it's amazing. And sometimes you're like, well, that was there. Mm-hmm. And that was how that went. So giving yourself time and going back to what we talked about at the beginning of not just rushing out and finding the nearest person to hug or yeah. fuck, but taking that time to kind of choose while easily. And, and it doesn't mean you're going to choose this person you're going to be with forever. Yeah. Not going out to like find your next forever husband or partner or whatever. It's making sure you're finding somebody who can be gentle with you in the way you need mm-hmm. somebody who's going to respect that you've gone through a life change and listen to that. And like, at least in that short space of time, like be able to, you know, kind of meet you mm-hmm. at least halfway. And and I would imagine that the, them acknowledging that because a lot of you're talking about the baggage. A lot of times folks probably think, you know, I shouldn't talk to my new lovers or partners about the fact that, you know, I've been having sex with the same person for the last mm-hmm. 20 years because we're not supposed to talk about the sex that we used to have before this person. Yeah. And, and so I assume that that, especially if you're in that place where you're still healing, learning, relearning, rediscovering, um, you, who you are, that, that having some spaciousness to be able to still own, like this is where I'm at is important. If, they, if people can't handle it, then, I th- would imagine it would be really hard yeah. to be with, with someone if you have to pretend like there isn't all of this, um, these questions and or the fear in, in you of, of this is like a really scary thing. And I, yeah. I think that was a good, what you brought up, really important about creating the spaciousness, the jumping into a, a new mm-hmm. long-term monogamous or not relationship where you're sort of distracting from going through your own process yeah. is something that I've seen commonly happen and I'm sure... Amy, you've seen it. I'm sure you've seen it with mm-hmm. with friends or or family where they were in a, lo- a long relationship. There was a divorce or some th- something shifted, and then they jumped into another relationship very quickly after without doing any work. And same problem. And then then the same problem comes yeah. up, and it's five or ten years later, and the same things are happening. And it's it's it worries me sometimes when I see friends go through those patterns. Yeah. Like it's okay to be alone. It's you, you don't have to be in a relationship with someone right away. Just maybe just date or yeah. put, put yourself out there and do some, some of your own self care. You have to make room for your single lady magic. Like I just have had such so many epiphanies, like so many emotional, like, Oh shit. Like laying in my bed at 2 AM. Cause I can, mm-hmm. and or all, and also just living alone has made it where I'm kind of like I'm gonna just be awake for a little bit longer. But mm-hmm. having these moments of like I have baggage, and here's all the baggage, and here's oh 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 wait oh so hey trauma from childhood mm-hmm. and teenagehood that we never dealt with. Why? Because we got into a relationship with somebody, never dealt with our trauma. Mm-hmm. That stuff impacted that relationship, a 17-year relationship. And I'm just unpacking all of this stuff now because I finally have space to be alone because we don't, you know, we all try to run from our stuff. Mm-hmm. and and so, Or sometimes we don't know we've had trauma until it sneaks up on you. And that happened to me. Like, I didn't realize, I knew the things that had happened to me, but I I had just kept surviving and when i was in a stable place everything was like well hello yeah hi trauma i'm here to fuck you up (laughs) i'm ready to dive in right and so having that space it allowed me time to like okay 
this is how I get angry or this is the things. Oh, so like I get really mad when you ask me questions this way because it makes me think of how my mom Mm -hmm. did this thing. And like I'm realizing this with you because you allow me space to talk about my feelings. And this is never a thing that I like broke down with my partner, which then would make me cry because I'm like, oh, my God, like this is why we always fought. Or maybe not just me, but like um, this is the thing that I fucked up in that relationship. And so having being able to like cry and realize like, okay, it's not just you Mm -hmm. that added to it. But that's been so helpful to step into. I have trust issues. And I say that shit out loud. I do. I'm an eight. I don't know if you do the Enneagram. Oh, yeah. But I'm a eight, seven. Listen, I'm an eight with a, is it a nine wing? Or no, I'm an eight with a seven oh, wing. Oh, you are the enthusiast. Yep. Woo! I can see that for sure. <laughs> um, but we eights have trust issues that stem from our mothers. And I'm, but, and that kind of stuff, I stepped way more into being That's a woo. challenger. The eight is, we want to be in control of everything. It's we need challenge. everything to be in this. I think it's the challenge. Yeah. Our, I forget what the One of my good friends wing. is, what you're, desc- what you're describing is what a challenger would do. We like to argue. Yeah. And we want to be in control. Oh, yeah. And, and the trust issues. We don't jealousy, trust nobody. It's an eight, you're a challenger. Yeah. We just, everybody's out wing. to get I us. I have an eight wing. Yeah. So, but it helped me this it helped me step into that stuff like i'm not super woo but i look at my chart a lot more because i'm like oh i've had a lot more epiphanies about why my life goes the way it goes and just stopping and breathing and not going everything by my chart but it's been like oh this explains a lot and that's been the work i've been doing on myself it's like oh you you know you don't even trust a lot of your friends, mm-hmm. people you love, but you're always waiting for somebody to hurt you. And sitting in bed at like 3 a.m. like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. I am always waiting for people to hurt me. Mm-hmm. This is horrible. Oh, OK, well, how do we get to a space where we're not waiting for betrayal? And how do you get and these are it's it's either going to be therapy. Like I went to therapy for a little bit. I need to but we had to stop because it was only for short term, but I have to find a new one. But. Finding anything, whether it's a good set of friends, a therapist, reading an ass load of books about whatever it is, but really breaking down all those things that I would have gotten defensive about before. Mm. Like somebody telling me I have trust issues, I probably would have been like, fuck you. And you also were a little bit hurt because, and this is the thing, when trust issues come up, uh, perhaps you had a partner and, and I, I have a really good friend that just got a divorce. She was only married a few years and he was cheating mm. and now she mm-hmm. already kind of had trust issues and now they're even more apparent and prevalent in her life. And yeah. she's like, I don't know how to move on from this. I don't know what to do. Data therapist who will say, yeah. Yeah. I totally see what you're doing. Like, I see what you're doing right She's now. Therapy, I know why you're hard, feeling yeah. the way you are. But, and he doesn't therapize me, but yeah. he, but he, we talk about this stuff and he's like, this is this stuff. And yeah. I'm like, oh, you're right. Here it is. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where do they have a okay. dating site for how to find a therapist? I know they should, right? Like, Single therapist. Well, also, where are you at? The Please language apply. that you use, and this is what I was trying to tell her specifically, because she's like, I always attract the shitheads. I always attract the people that will hurt me. And I was like, okay. Something the to look first at. thing you can do is start shifting that thought process yeah. and say, I always find great people. I always find amazing humans that will help me get my trust back. Yeah. I always, I want to... You know, I want to attract more uh, therapists in my life. Yeah. Go to a therapy convention mm. and maybe you can Ooh, meet one. Yeah. You know? That's it, like, it's like wedding crashers, but <laughs> therapy <laughs> crashers where you go there to go pick up on, or like when we went out in the neighborhood the other day and there was like straight men in there, they were picking up on yeah. women there. And they're in there and <laughs> like, like, you know, hey, I'm straight, right? Like, yeah, I'm straight. I want to go home with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's, one, I think the language piece is huge. There's the language huge. and then also it's an opportunity. Yeah. Right. right. So like as much as I can manifest and be like, oh, okay, now I'm just going to have a different perspective. If there's trauma and wounding, there's an op. And so that's the other piece. I go through major life shift and it's super devastating. So I can look at it as like, oh, I'm fucked and this is a terrible thing. Or I can reframe it as there's an opportunity to do this deep work that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's not easy. It may not be fun. It may not be super enjoyable. It might be really painful. Yeah. And it's, there's a really great opportunity there for you finally. Yeah. Well, no matter what the life, the life shift is, should you choose to take it, a lot of people don't because it's a scary it is it's an uneasy one or to get into this real existential like your life is a journey Mm -hmm. that has a lot of roads and this was where you're supposed to be and like what we want in life doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be smooth and like i've had all these things of like okay 
the universe is just sit, she's showing you some shit. Okay, sit back. Like this is this wouldn't have come to you if this wasn't happening. Like I, I you know, my divorce, I would never leave New York, and now I because he didn't ever want to move mm. and now i'm like well maybe i do want to go somewhere else and live for a while and what are opportunities can come of that and it's changing your mind frame and yeah. looking at like the the different things also like ooh, the boundaries and knowing what ooh, i that's need a good out of somebody yeah. which is also why dating stuff and sites have been become a thing i'm like no <laughs> no no huh you would like that no <laughs> because now i have it more honed down now yeah. i know like what i'm looking for and what you need to be able to accept you need to be able to accept that i'm in the middle of the door divorce that's not messy because we've been very cordial split everything down the middle like we're doing the DIY Consciously DIY version. We are. Consci- I mean, in yeah. a sense, like we didn't call it that, but we really, it's been very, it was like, oh, we sat on the bed together and went through the credit cards of like, okay, wait, that one's in your name. So you got to call and get me taken off as the authorized user. And like, okay, we called to split our stocks and they mm-hmm. were like, oh, we need a letter because people do shitty stuff. Oh. And the moment you tell them it's divorced, they like freeze the account because mm-hmm. they're like, you don't know how many people oh. screw over. Yeah. 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 And so we yeah. were like, oh, it's cool. What do we need to send you so we've done all this together but people hear divorce and they immediately think that they're gonna like be in your house having sex with you and your ex is gonna burst in the door yeah (laughs) or something weird so it's like i'm i have more of a standard of like you need to understand where i am in my life and that it's not necessarily messy i may have messy moments Mm -hmm. and so i think that's important too is kind of wherever you are it's okay to make boundaries for wherever you are if you need somebody to be perfect then okay and that's probably gonna what's gonna get you to be solo for a little while when you need to be um but be really clear about what you are who what and who you're gonna allow into your life Mm -hmm. and i think that's super helpful in like like oh i'm worth it i'm worth finding somebody who's good to me in these ways and like having a partner who's so good to me i'm like i deserve this like Mm -hmm. i don't deserve less than what I have and what I have is amazing. So, okay. Like moving forward through all of this, like, you know, the, that is such a, the boundary piece is amazing. Yeah. I wrote down every single thing I wanted out of my new partner. And, um, and I even was open to no matter what gender I mm. was like, this is what I want out of the new partner. And I went as far as to say, the into fashion and uh doesn't mind i sleep in mm-hmm. and but like specific things wants to travel Th- those things are huge yeah but really big things uh and then really small things likes pizza <laughs> is a foodie you know things that i really wanted yeah and i i would read it all the time but i feel like getting clear because how many times do you talk to folks that are maybe going through breakups or have been broken up and they have no idea what they want right right no idea what they want out of a partner it's like write it down and then mm-hmm. read it and don't even uh, think about it. Just write down exactly what you want. And it, right. that's part of a manifestation. Yes. But it's also good to get clear on your boundaries, what you definitely and not what you don't want, right. but like what you want and yeah. then setting and making sure you're not going to settle for something that's not within those compounds. Yeah. Or be shaped by it. Mm-hmm. Cause 19 yeah. year old me wanted to be poured into the container of whoever I was with mm-hmm. because I didn't know who I was. 38 year old me is like okay we can be two containers that live together but we don't have to conform to each other and like be exactly what you know it's like well do we fit together we're puzzle pieces but we don't have to be you know there's a canoe (laughs) analogy for that that i don't remember what it is my friend uh, our mutual friend i won't say his name on here but he um he was i was i was telling him something about you know with my dating life right now and he was like oh you want to be make sure you want to be in your own canoe, and then have them be in their canoe, but make sure that your canoes are can like cruise next to each. There's like I, I maybe I'm not saying I it right. It. I don't know who created this, but like they can cruise next to each other, but they're still their own canoes. Right. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a good one. But yeah. Um, I'm gonna wrap this up because oh, well, I know it's, we're, we're the time's going by so fast. Good I know we, we we have so much that we can say all the time. I yeah, I like when I was teaching the workshops at the Sex Expo, they gave me half an hour. I'm like these are normally two hour workshops, <laughs> and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? How do I, I could talk about this forever? Uh, oh, but Lola, dirty Lola, yes. we so appreciate you sharing everything. I'm gonna have you actually. I was gonna look at it and say. 
Remind our folks, can you, and also, can you just say a little bit more about Sex at a Go-Go, what you do, where and people can find you? open to yeah. all the things that you're doing. All my projects. Yeah. So Sex at a Go-Go is my... Cats in your bag. Yeah, that's true. Get in there, cat. The cats, cats in the bag. bag. <laughs> so, Sex Ed Go Go is my live Sex Ed Q and A and Go Go review. Um, we've been doing it for six years now. It's amazing. I've done it mostly in New York, but all over the country and into Canada. Uh, and basically, what we do is we answer the audience's questions about love, sex, life, relationships off the cuff. Mm -hmm. No preparation. And it's myself and my pussy posse Mm -hmm. which is composed of like a special guest and usually a whoever the performer is that night. But they also chime in. So we're sitting on stage and just Buddy, <laughs> it's cute. He's scooting. Yeah. Is the cat scooting yeah. on the carpet? Is the yeah. scooting cat? He's, he scoots. Sometimes. He's so cute. Oh, um, but yeah, so we we answer the audience's questions. There's entertainment. I, it's like sneaky learning, and but I like to give people a chance to ask those questions they wouldn't. They don't have anybody in their life to mm-hmm. ask, or they may not want to go to a, a, a workshop. Like, I try to pull the people in who aren't going to go to workshops, who maybe wouldn't go to the sex expo yet, yeah. who are just like, I came in, I want to hang out, have a beer, or my friend told me about this thing, so we're going to have a drink. And then they end up like asking people, ask some really, I get a lot of butt questions. Yeah, <laughs> they call they that do. butt questions. Oh, yeah. Butt questions, but I get a lot of profound things. And then it also gives me a platform to talk about my life changes. So I got to talk about being super slutty and married, but then I got to talk about being not so slutty and getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. And it's opened up a lot more windows of questioning from people or people just saying like, thank you for talking mm-hmm. about this. So mm-hmm. I love that. We're a little bit, we're on hiatus for now because I'm, we're planning out next year, but we'll be back. Um, and then my, right now I'm the commu- one of the community ambassadors for hashtag open, which is a dating site mm-hmm. <laughs> talking about open. dating. Yeah. yeah. And I like it. It's yeah. a, it's a sex positive, all inclusive dating site. Mm-hmm. And so when we say all inclusive, it means We are trying to make sure people who are ethically non-monogamous, kinky, monogamish, non-binary, non-binary, feel like they get represented. So there's over 20 ways to talk about your gender. There's over 20 ways to talk about your sexual orientation. There's over 20 ways to talk about your your relationship status Mm -hmm. and style that you're in. Um, And they don't ask you like how much you know you weigh, what Mm -hmm. your body type is or your race. They want to know things like, what are you into? What are your boundaries? Mm -hmm. What kinds of things you like? And you get to talk about those things using hashtags, Mm -hmm. hence the name hashtag open. So you can put like hashtag kinky, hashtag Mm -hmm. nerdy, hashtag doctor who, whatever you're into. Hashtag looking for a therapist. Right. Yeah, (laughs) for real. And so people, it it like finds people who have similar or the same hashtags Mm -hmm. and that's who gets populated. So you don't have to write this long story of a profile, which I have on OkCupid. Okay mm-hmm. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I put like a few lines, just like really general, but then everything else is in hashtags. It makes it easier when you're swiping to stop and look because you can quickly see what people are into. Um, and if you're going to meld and decide to like swipe. Um, and they're also trying to do a lot with safety. So they're still... Uh, they're taking up that mantle of you both have to like each other in order to contact one another. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not taking anybody's information. So it's you, you sign in with like a, your phone number. It doesn't save like your email and they're not selling your info. Um, so that's a great thing. And I just like that they're trying to reach out to many communities. Mm-hmm. So they have lots of different community ambassadors who are in way different parts of the community and who are going to be able to talk to different people because they want to bring everyone in. Mm-hmm. And even monogamous folks, like people are like, oh, is this really for me? And I'm like, yeah, because you can be monogamous and kinky or want to explore or, you know, or just whatever. But open. maybe you can be open. open. Yeah. Open. Okay. You can be non binary and still be monogamous totally. and not kinky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And want a space where you can put like non-binary butch this 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 and be able to like write that out so somebody sees you mm-hmm. and and that's what I enjoy is that they're giving people a way to be seen because a lot of dating websites that's what's missing you feel like you have to fit yourself into a box, a box. Yeah. yeah and so. where can people find more info about both of those uh things, things. yeah so sex at a go-go is sex at a go-go.com okay and hashtag open is hashtag open 
I think dot com. I hope yes. Mm-hmm. And it's so you spell spelled out. out. You spell yeah. out the word hashtag. hashtag. Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't do the symbol. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, if you, I guess if you did a Google search for public. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, those are. And then what about you on social media? Oh yeah. Social media. You can find me. I'm mostly on Twitter at Dirty Lola and also Instagram. Um, both of those places, I talk about all the projects that I do and weird threads about life and the universe and divorce and social justice. And sometimes there's a good picture of my titties. So, mm. oh, nice. oh, absolutely. I yeah. love it. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Yeah. I yeah. enjoyed it. Your cat was awesome. And yeah. your apartment's great. He came out to entertain. Yes, I know. <laughs> yes. We have a lot of animal appearances on the we show. We really oh, good. do. Okay. Time April's dog is, is scooting on the carpet or chewing on her foot or humping He's her so legs. funny. <laughs> I love him so he much. He only wants to scoot in front of other people. I'm like, get out of here. Yeah. Show it off. Show it's it like, off. Look at that. <laughs> All right, y'all. We love you, our listeners. We loved having you at the Sex Expo this last week. And we had a lot of fans there. So uh, we can't wait to tell you more about what we're up to uh and yeah if you haven't done so review us on itunes we have four and a half stars we want to get five stars so if you love us review us it just helps more people Mm -hmm. get the messages of what we're doing so um if you lastly like wine lola likes wine i do uh check out marginswine.com the fall releases limited fall releases are coming out sign up for the newsletter so you can be in the know about when that happens marginswine.com. Amy and I have been huge fans since almost two years now, so see why. All right, y'all. We love you. See you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Don't forget to head on over to our website at shamelesssex.com for more. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use coupon code SHAMELESSPP in all caps at purepleasureshop.com.